Welcome back guys! Today we are looking at a crush goodie box and this box is from December 2020. This is called the Be Extra on a Monday box and it is told to be because we are stuck inside. Um, just with ourselves, there's no need to not look good. We can just choose to look good for our own sake. So we should pick a outfit, put on some makeup and just look good and let's do it on a Monday. That is what they tell us in this month's box or last month's box at this point. So we should choose the worst day of the week they say to just make it better than any other day of the week. And I guess why not? Because we should be able to feel and look fabulous in the best company ever. Our own. This box cost uh, 99 in Danish, it is 13, 13 and they have in Euro and 16.5 is in US dollars. The actual cost is uh, of this box, like what I got it out to be, made it out to be, is 527 in Danish, uh, 71 in Euros and actually 87 in US dollars. So we get a lot for our money in this box. The first product is the Lash Faded Lash Primer. And it is supposed to nourish the lashes, separate them and make them look longer and full. And I'm really wondering why we got a primer in this box, because normally the crush grey boxes are only for makeup. But in the normal goodie box, we got a mascara, and in this crush goodie box, we got a primer. And I find that very weird. They could have just switched it up, and it would have been so much better for me. It would have made so much more sense. It is very easy to apply. You just apply it like any normal mascara. And it actually is gray. Normally, I feel like primers are transparent, but apparently, this one is gray, which is kind of weird. When you put mascara on top of it, it sticks in a very weird way. So it doesn't just make this extra layer in, for example, my black mascara. It only sticks to some places, so other places it just look like these grey patches are popping up on my eyes. I'll just put a picture up so you can see the difference. But I feel like my lower lashes look nicer with this one than just normal mascara. So the packaging. You have our guarantee to have sticky fingers in this one. This silver look just makes it so. You really can't do anything with it. Stinky, sticky fingers is a guarantee. But otherwise, I guess it's pretty normal. It's very boring. I don't really find it that interesting. He said, like a normal mascara slash primer thing. And there are no labels on it, but there are some ingredients that I would like to tell you about. And these are first titanium dioxide, which is thickening, widening, lubricating, and a sunscreen ingredient. It protects from UVA and UVB. Sodium hyaluronate, which, which uh, replenishes, it is the salt form of hyaluronic acid. Heliansis and acetyl oil is sunflower seed oil. It replenishes, strengthens, and soothes. It is good on dry, dehydrated, or compromised skin and can help reduce signs of stress or irritation to the skin. Resogen is found in egg yolks and glands. It's an emollient and a water binding and has skin restoring abilities. Scalpel palmitate is a form of vitamin C. It's effective at, like, at reducing environmental damage and also an antioxidant. Tocopherol is vitamin E and an antioxidant, and the last one is hydrolyzed soy protein, which is skin soothing and a quick antioxidant. So, back to what I feel. So the claims, it definitely gives fuller lashes, but I really don't see any real difference compared to a normal uh, mascara in like concerning the length and pretty much everything else it does to the lashes. To me, it just reminds me of a grey mascara. It doesn't really do anything more. 
at all. And the fuller look I feel like I get from this, like you could still make it with a normal mascara, you just have to put on a few extra layers. That's it. Doesn't do much more, much else. It costs 149 in Danish, it is 20 in euros and 24.5 in euros dollars. And I will honestly just use it if I feel like I need a grey mascara. I won't use it as a primer because I feel it is completely useless as that. It just reminds me of a normal grey mascara. So that's what I will use it for if I ever get to it. Cosmetic CC Plus Cream with SPF 50. I have a lot to say about this product and I can tell you already now they are not a lot of good things. So it is supposed to be if or give a natural flawless finish. It's supposed to be buildable, coverage, hydrating, smoothing and give softer skin. It's supposed to fill wrinkles and minimize the appearance of pores. And honestly like, this is the first product we got that actually looked at our account when we started or when I started and signed up for this box. I had to fill in an account with my hair color, skin type and so on and so forth. And this is the only one that actually looked at the um, skin color. I haven't had any other products ever that looked at the profile like this one did. But it blended in very fast actually and it is kind of buildable. Just to some extent it can be built but it is very sheer and very natural at first. It does like really fit my skin tone. I thought it was a bit darker at first but it ended up blending into my skin so it looked very natural. Um, but yeah it was very very sheer but could be could be built up a bit so it's like an okay coverage but not really better than that. The packaging um, we got this in a cardboard box and I don't really need that box, it's only a box that says a lot of information about the product. I find that <clears throat> just like a bit useless, I would rather just get the product as it is. The scent, I simply cannot put my finger on it, I still don't know what I feel it smells like, but it definitely smells like something. It is clinically tested. And um, to be honest, the ingredients will take 30 years to get through, but I guess we'll just do it anyways. There are, uh, in these ingredient lists, when I choose them, I only take the really good things and the really bad things. And there's 32 really good things, 7 bad, and all in all, from what I could find from the ingredient list, it was a bit weird the ingredient list, so some of these ingredients might be there twice but not much of them, like only a few. But I could find 91 ingredients in all, and that just makes me wonder if this is actually worth anything. I don't think all those like ingredients can work together. Some of them must like destroy or, or annoy the others. Um, so already there, I'm thinking like, I don't like this product because how in the world can they make so many ingredients work together? I know a CC cream is supposed to do a lot of things, but it just makes me wonder that perhaps they won't be doing the things like well enough or as good as they should have. But I have like put these up in another way than I usually do. I have taken like the um, the effect they have and written down, so I won't tell you every single um, ingredient that was simply take too long. So I have first like the antioxidant abilities. Um, a lot of the ingredients have more than just one ability, so I've just written them under one of the things they do, but they could also be much more or do much more. But first off, antioxidants, we got tocopherol acetate, Vitus vinifero seed extract, Camilla sinensis leaf extract, uh, glycine, soy oil, curcuma, longer root, tocopherol, ret uh, retinol, palmitate, acetylcarnide, HCl, maros, alba root extract, Pereira lobata, Shisandra, shinansis fruit extract, pinaki, granatum extract, honeysuckle flower extract, and ascorbic acid. And again, they are also doing other stuff, but this is either their primary function or one of their functions. Then 
I got a type that's called by skin restoring, replenishing, or soothing. And we got palmitol tetrapeptide 7, also palmitol tetrapeptide 1. Niacinamide, cholesterol, glycerin, licorice root, uh, lactobacillus ferment, azimus, nebulous flower extract, chrysanthemum, uh, indicum extract, colloidal oatmeal, and niacin. Then for the moisture part, we got pantomantic acid, persia gratisana oil, and n hydroxyzinamide. And I know this sounds so stupid because, well, I don't know all these ingredients, so I'm just reading what I found in the best way that I can. There are two sunscreen ingredients, which are titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. And then there's a lot of bad fragrance. All the bad things, like all these seven bad ingredients, are all fragrance, but some of them are worse than others. There's citrus medial lim uh, limonium, peel oil, citrus Arantium, Bergamia fruit oil, Citrus Arantium dulcis peel oil, Eucalyptus bulbous leaf oil, Citrus Arantifolia, uh, Cinnamonum, and Citrus granis peel oil. And this last one I remember is like grapefruit, grapefruit a fragrance, and actually if it's in high, like in the middle or start to middle of the ingredient list, normally it can really be a problem, it can really aggravate and be sensitizing this to the skin. Um, and this is actually just above the middle. Um, normally another giveaway would be it smells a lot like grapefruit, but I don't really feel like this does. Perhaps some of these scents I can't put my finger on is grapefruit, but I don't just smell grapefruit. So I hope it's okay, but it does make me a bit concerned knowing that there's so much fragrance in it and that some of it can actually be pretty dangerous. On the list still there's a lot of good ingredients, but I don't see why you would use all of them. I'm more to like a lot simpler ingredients than when you get like over 50 ingredients in a product. How well can it actually be? Like how well can this SPF actually protect you when there's so much other stuff going on in here? I really don't know. Uh, concerning the claims, I think it really tries too hard to do so many things. I think it doesn't really do like any of them, I don't feel any hydration, it only gives a bit of coverage and blows a little bit. Um, as I said, it can be built up so it helps the more you put on with the coverage, with the blood lines and filling in pores and lines and wrinkles. Um, I don't really see any color correcting and again, I'm wondering how good the SPF is, if it actually is anything. Most of all, it reminds me of a standard concealer, not really anything good, not really anything bad. I just think it tries too hard with way too many ingredients. If you are interested in this, maybe you are. It has a lot of like good reviews. If you are, it's 295 in Danish, 40 in Euros and 48.5 in US dollars and I will not use it again. I will not buy a new one. I got so scared when I read all the ingredients, so I really don't ever want it on my face again. Third product up is the Isadora Smooth and Shine Lip Glass, and this is supposed to be a non-sticky, high shine, uh, moist shine and comfortable wear lip gloss. And I got this in the color Strawberry Bakery which is very pink and very shimmering. So I was really excited to see how this actually looked on my lips. And applying it was super easy, though the doe foot in this is actually a bit hard. Not like uncomfortable to use, but you can feel like there's something inside that's making this doe foot a bit harder. I would have liked it a bit on the softer side. So um, I had to reapply it actually after a few hours so it does go off. It's not like it gets stuck when you drink or anything, but it does naturally wear off kind of quickly. The feel on my lips, it is not sticky at all. I must give them that. I hate sticky stuff on my lips. This is not sticky at all. It's only a bit sticky at first when you apply it, but it's gone so soon after. I don't really think about it. I don't really notice it. And um, well, I don't really see like much. I have it on right now, so perhaps you can see. 
and the color matches my lips pretty well it looks very sheer so that's not really much color and it only gives like a bit of, a bit of sparkle a bit of um bit of color a bit of gloss like that it does seem more glossy than it seems sparkly but it doesn't really matter to me so it's very natural somehow i really like that it do not again go off when drinking and it's very comfortable to wear i don't feel it's either sticky or heavy or weighing me down or anything um the packaging i actually think it's very ugly i'm so sorry to say too much is happening we have the ingredient list we have the labels and so on and so forth that's just too much happening on these um, on this packaging though it's it could be cute i feel like it's very pink so it could be like a cute thing but i think like too much going on so i don't like it that much the scent is very sugary and sweet which i find weird because there's not supposed to be any like fragrance in it but we will get to that just a bit later. Again, the labels is fragrance free and clinically tested. And this fragrance free thing is so funny. Uh, first off, I would like to talk about the good ingredients and then we will just take the bad ones. There's not really bad things in here, but that's something I have been wondering. The good ones is caprylic or capric triglyceride, which is uh, from coconut oil and glycerin. It's an emollient and skin replenishing. It's a mix of fatty acids that skin can use to replenish its surface and resist moisture loss. It is also a thickener. Ethyl hexyl salicylate is a sunscreen ingredient. It protects against the UV. Tocopherol acetate is vitamin E and an antioxidant. Methoxybenzol and methane is a sunscreen acid. That's kind of a hard word, but it works. As a sunscreen active. And the last one is Phytosterol or Octodotosol uh, Laurel Gutama is an emollient and skin uh, conditioner. It can prevent moisture loss and can calm aggravated skin. It is also an antioxidant. And the last thing, just a small thing that's not a bad ingredient but it can be, is aroma. And aroma is very tightly linked to fragrance. Not that it's the same, because fragrance is sensitizing, can be sensitizing. Uh, aroma instead, well, can also, but not in the same way that fragrance can, because aroma is mostly used to give like a flavor to the actual product. So sometimes it may also be listed as flavor on the box instead. And I just feel like it's a bit too close to fragrance for me to like it. When you use aroma, sometimes you also get this flavor. If you want a, for example, a sweet um, flavor, then you will also get a sweet scent. So it comes with the same. But if you want something else, like if you take your aroma or your flavor from something citrusy, for example, it can aggravate and irritate the skin because it's a very harsh ingredient, a very harsh place it comes from. And the fact that we don't know where this comes from, I, I'm not really so worried because it smells sweet, it doesn't smell citrusy. But if it did, I wouldn't have used it because it just seems a bit too, um, not dangerous, but uncertain, like where it comes from. I don't think there's anything too bad in this because it smells so sweet. But the fact that we don't know makes me a bit nervous. Um, yeah, so that, that's simply it. I'm saying the claims, like it's very comfortable, it gives a great high shine, it's not sticky, and it makes my lips look cute. So that's good. It costs only 18 in Danish, and then it's 11 in euros and 13 in US dollars. And I think I will use it again. Like I have to reapply a few times. Perhaps I can do that. I'm not as good as wearing uh, in wearing lip gloss as I am wearing lip balm but I might want to use it once in a while for something and I won't buy a new one because I feel a bit cheated by the whole aroma slash not fragrance part um, I feel like it's too close when you tell a product it's fragrance free and instead they got aroma which is like the <laughs> little brother of, of fragrance um, so I feel a bit cheated by that so I won't buy any more
fourth product is the Rose Loon Paris Baby Moon Nail Polish. And this is supposed to be long lasting, intense color and extra shine to your nails. And this bright red really speaks to me. I find this color very appealing and very nice. It was so easy to apply. It only took like a few strokes. Um, I did put on three layers because I didn't want to see any of my nail underneath. Um, but it's very buildable and my nail didn't get irritated by me putting on so many layers. It looked so great. The pigment was really there. Um, and it actually took five days before it started chipping and the most parts where it started chipping was where I had like uh, broken my nail or something like that. So it really held on for a long time. This packaging is very nice but very standard. It is vegan though, so that's a good thing. Ingredients I won't talk about. I don't usually talk about ingredients in nail polish because I don't feel like it's as bad because you only put it on your nails. So some people say you should think about it because there are like microplastics in it. That's not good for the environment. But it's not like I use a lot of nail polish all the time, so I'm not really feeling so bad about it. If that makes sense. But the actual ingredients we won't talk about. I agree to pretty much all the claims. Like it stays on for long. It's a very pigmented, very nice red color, and it does give me shine. It gives like this nice gel finish. It just looks really professional. The cost is one hundred and twelve, so it is fifteen in euros and eighteen point five US dollars. And I will use it many, many, many times. I really adore this nail polish, and I will look forward to using it again, which will probably be a bit interesting. The last product for today is the Model Co Liquid Metal Eyeshadow and it's supposed to give like a dynamic glistening effect. It's supposed to be easy to use, set fast and be easy. Again, they said easy twice, it's not my fault, they said it. So I got the color in the, the color, I got this in the color Champagne um, and I actually got something similar before, I think it was also from this brand perhaps. Um, but it was pretty okay. Uh, I normally like the powder eyeshadow small, but this can be very convenient, especially on the go. It is very easy to apply. It's very creamy at first, so it does take a short amount to dry down, but it's not really that bad. You can just put it on with the doe foot applicator or just pat it on with your fingers. I use my fingers today. I have it on my eyes right now, so if you see something glittering, that's it. It is not heavy, not sticky not uncomfortable to wear at all. And I actually think it's it like felt a bit creamy and so one eternity late. So my camera just died, but I am pretty sure I got to the packaging and it could be really cool. It's very simple, very boring. I hate this lid. Um, I feel like it's very weird to put a pink lid on this somehow. Not that I don't like pink, but it just feels very weird to me. The scent is very much like wet powder. The uh, eyeshadow, not like liquid eyeshadow, but like if you have a normal eyeshadow that is wet. I know that sounds weird, that's how it feels like, so that's just that's all I'm saying. There are no labels on this, and concerning the ingredient list, it took me so dang long to actually find anything and when I finally found the ingredient list I actually couldn't read half of the words some of them missed the letters and missed like parts of the actual words um, but the ones the ingredients that I could actually find like yeah there was nothing no worthy it was just okay nothing really um, bad nothing really good so the cost is 149 in Danish, so that's 20 in Euro and 24.5 in US dollars. And concerning the claim, I can only like say they're pretty much spot on. It does seem glistening, uh, it is easy to use, it is setting very fast also, so I can only agree on that. And I actually think I will be using it at least when traveling, perhaps not so much at home uh, where I have my palettes, but if I have to use it on the go, then it's very convenient. So that's actually all for this crush box. And have you ever tried
tried any of these products, I'd love to know in the comments down below. And I just hope you had a Merry Christmas or a Merry Winter, Merry December, uh, and a good New Year. And now I just hope you all have a happy life and one day at a time.